okay. Yeah. Shall anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sorry. I just... Hi, Dandies. Welcome to the next episode of Braving Britain. We're joined by Kimberly Abakar here to my, well, to my left or right, depending on which way this recording spins it. Um, so why don't you tell us a bit about yourself, Kim? Uh, I've been an aspiring UTRN since 2019. Uh, I think that is uh, around the last quarter of the year of 2019. And so happened that I started like uh, and as a new in the new system of the NMC, which is all online. And then um, it's pretty quite a curiosity at first because uh, uh, I think the process seemed to be very easy at first, but at the going through the journey when I started, I felt like I'm so down because of the pandemic. So that was I started. You got it, it. just as the pandemic started then. Mm, yeah, because the, the pandemic started around late quarter, uh, the last quarter of 2019. And all things started by that time, and yeah, it's like a whirlwind <laughs> yeah. during the 2020. <laughs> oh, it. Everything suddenly went from being done, you know, in real time, face to face, to oh, everything's online. You got to do it all online now. Yeah, it, it really... So really hard at first, but when it turned out to be online, it's much pretty easy. When I think, uh, when I make it some examination or assessment of how we're going to process all the papers, but during the time that the pandemic came, it hit by around the first quarter of 2020, we, when uh, all the shops and everything was all locked down, that started the journey of <laughs> the difficulty of oh, becoming so. a new person. Yeah. So I suppose you had plenty of time to do it then. I mean, you couldn't go out anywhere, you couldn't you know, visit anything. So what else were you going to do? <laughs> yeah, so it's really hard. I've been working here in the, in Saudi Arabia for like uh, seven years, more, uh, more than seven years already. And then uh, I told myself there is no security of tenure here. You cannot own a house. You cannot uh, have some pension scheme on your own. So it's like it's not for family setting. So right. I, I told myself I need to go migrate in a country where can I where I can start up a living with my family as well. So I started to have this kind of an interest in going to the UK because it's something like uh, in demand for nurses on that time during 2019. When I took my uh, OET, I took the computer-based uh, test. All right, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because that is the more convenient one. At the time, they are uh, promoting the launching of this computer base at that time by the OET. Mm -hmm. um, in the middle of the exam, I took it in a venue. But my OET speaking, I took it online in my laptop inside my room. But I took the three parts, the listening, uh, reading, and the writing in a venue. So I went to the venue for my LRS. And then... At the middle of uh, my reading exam, my reading subtest exam, my computer shut down. Oh. All of us, all of us in that same scenario, I think we are six uh, examining ex on that, uh, in the examination room at that time. Uh, we are all shut down, no light. We don't know what time is it because we don't have watch and it's so dark. And the emergency light was really not working at that time. So we are cast in the dark and then the facilitator just uh, confirmed to us and uh, also con uh, told us that we can wait for 30 minutes and if the power cannot come back by 30 minutes we can reschedule our exam okay so we waited until it's all more than 30 minutes already so we started to be anxious so we are all <laughs> we are all very <laughs> sad about what happened. So I started to ask the facilitator if we can reschedule. I went back out. So I, he told me he will discuss with his manager. Then they will make a case uh, case uh, report so that they can report this one to the OET uh, support. So after that, it gave me more headache because I the next day when I asked the a test center, if they're going to reschedule me separately from what happened with the OET being aware of, they told me that I need to communicate to the OET giving their incident report case number, some sort of like that. So 
I need to communicate again through customer care, through phone, and through email. So it took me eternity. <laughs> My God. So until such time, uh, it's already that one is December before holidays. Yeah. So that is December 19th. So before holidays, so it took me again holidays. They will not comply with your queries. So by January, I booked my, I told you I booked earlier as well, my CBT together with my OAT. So I booked my CBT in the first, uh, second week of January and I passed. So I passed my CBT first before I took, uh, before my OET. Oh, okay. And then, really, yeah, that's what happened to me. So I'm really, really got into my UK RN journey. And then, it so happened that during the January, because it took long time to communicate to the OAT, what happened, the incident, incident report, what happened to that building during my exam, because I don't want to make another, um, what do you call this one, booking, yeah. because it's not my fault that the facility shut down and only that building, it's so unlucky, I don't know, maybe it's me or I don't know, but Test. it's so unlucky on my part that... <laughs> That building only, but the other neighboring buildings are really with power. But that building, my God, I'm not so... What happened to this day? And it so happened again that my passport, which is my authorization ID during my exam for the OET, going to be expired by August. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no, really. That's really terrible on my part. So I told myself, okay, uh, I told the OET, is it possible that I can take the exam here again in Riyadh? And then they told me no, because the earliest possible computer-based exam for Riyadh is by October. <laughs> My God, <laughs> October. And then so I told myself, okay, um, is there any possible thing that I can, uh, is there any possible option that I can take? He told me, if you want to book for OAT paper base, but you need to fly to Jeddah. So I flew to Jeddah and I took my OET and fortunately I passed it. I took it the uh, June, I don't know, I took it April 24 and the result came out by May 13 and I'm really happy that I passed the OET exam. Oh, yay! Hello. So so that is one relief. One relief. Yes. Oh, that is the, actually, if you were going to ask me, uh, I got six uh, process for you to become a UKR, and especially for me as an overseas uh, uh, applicant uh, aspiring to be a UKRN. Uh, I think the hardest part of being a UKRN is the requirements, acquiring the requirements, the things that the NMC for you to be registered, the NMC is asking you to give to give to them for you to be able to be become a UKRN. That's the first thing you need to procure. And then second thing is the registration because mm -hmm. the registration really um, uh, also you need to have pre-application assessment first so that you need to know what are the things you need, how much it costs, and of course, how long you are going to take for this journey. Until now, that's my problem. But fortunately, one trust, actually I did apply for two trusts, but the problem is the first trust that I applied is really one to deploy me by November. So my 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 enemy will be finished. I mean, it will be due by December. So they told me their OSCE support will take around one to two months. So it will be expired by that time. But I did uh, an email to the NMC, but until now they don't have any re reply <laughs> to my email. So yes. I am caught in the middle of it. But hopefully things will be gotten into uh, right right place. So we'll see. But yeah. I think they will consider. I think they will consider, they are very generous to nurses and I know they will consider my application. And hopefully the deployment that they asked, that they are, they told me, the agent who are uh, handling me is that maybe by mid or third week of September or by the last week of October. And hopefully, hopefully I will be in the UK by that time. The difficult part is that the the processing and the waiting time of the pandemic very difficult part of being a, an applicant is that 
the authorities that you're going to process all your documents are being closed because of the pandemic and they cannot open as they want because that's the process of the government so uh for me they told me it took me 30 to 45 working days uh for my passport to be uh, released and it so happened that i have some friends who also uh uh, renewed their passport took them only three weeks so I'm thinking how that did that happen and for me now it's like eternity <laughs> so the that timing the timing itself because of the pandemic again so the pandemic really affected many many UKRN aspirants <laughs> uh, with their process fortunately I found one trust that uh looking for an ICU critical nurse and I given my CV and they gave me an interview immediately just yeah. like I, I just I just did the uh, pass my CV during my duty in the evening yeah the, and then the next uh, and the early morning somebody an agent is calling me and telling me that I need to be in queue for an interview on same day and then I told oh my god it's like I don't know even the trust i need to review search first of what trust is this one is this really a good trust or some sort of like that because it's not like you want to have an interview you need to know first who is uh what is the trust you need to know how are the the community itself i need to search mm -hmm. and until such time until such time uh i i did an interview the next day because the my qualifications are all I mean, I passed all their evaluation and they told me that I am eligible for interview to the trust. So I did and they, all, they agreed and they hired me. After two days, they gave me the conditional offer. So I signed because I, uh, I asked the agent that if they can, they can deploy me the earliest time possible for me to cope up with my NMC due date, which is December. And then they told me, Hopefully your passport will come because at that time my passport didn't come yet. So I'll come. when my passport at that time it's again weekends. So I did pass my passport by the next week Monday, and they're really happy. They asked me to give some other documents, just like supplemental documents, not the major ones. And they told me my uh, application is already uh, for they send back to the trust and for evaluation, and then they're gonna be applying for my COS afterwards. So I'm just still waiting at this time. Okay. But I promise I'm asking them to give me the I mean the opportunity to to be joining the September cohort, hopefully. So I can be joining you by well, September. Fing fingers crossed. I mean it depends how quickly they can get everything processed. That as you say, the pandemic has slowed everything down. But yeah. they do what they can. My goodness. So you've had a you've had a bit of a journey then starting in 2019 and basically only uh, just getting to where you need to be. Mm -hmm. You've had a lot yeah. of luck then. Every, every building you've been into has broken or got sick. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because this pandemic really gives really, makes all the process uh, slower and sometimes it will also affect you. I, I have this kind of depression in me during my journey because uh, whenever you finish one problem, I mean, during the process, you finish one thing, another came. Yeah. <laughs> you you seem to be having that, didn't you? Yeah, it's like, um, it's like uh, why it's not stopping, why it's always like this. And the good thing is I keep my faith. I continue to do all the things that I need to do to continue to become a UKRN. And my friends are all the way, and my family as well, because I'm living here alone. I mean, I'm in the overseas. My family is from the Philippines, and they are, I'm not telling them my whole uh, problems because maybe they are going to be sad as well. So it's just that I have to be strong enough to be, <laughs> to be able to overcome this one. Uh, I think that's what I can share for the meantime. But for the aspirant, the UKRNs, I want to advise them that they need to take their uh, English test first. Thank once you. The yeah. Thank you. Once the, uh, thank you, Lan. Okay. That's the That's, good thing that yes. you need to do, the English test first. English test first. Don't do what Kim did and do the CBT first. 
<laughs> yeah, I did it simultaneously because the new system told us there that we can take the CBT without even taking yes, the OAT. You can. Yeah. So many people are a little bit confused, but they want to take the process more uh, easier for them because at that time, it started already the pandemic. Uh, it's like the, some rumors from China and so they are really afraid. So when the NMC told that we can took with the new system, the CBT with the OET together, many people took the opportunity to do it, especially from the Asian ones, you know, Singapore, Philippines, that are, those are the place that they took the CBT first. So many, I saw some social media groups in the Facebook that they are creating groups just to give some information on about themselves, how's their journey. So I, I think I was part of them as well, some of the groups. So I'm really um, thankful about them because uh, their sharings and experiences give us uh, an insight of how are we going to uh, go through the process of this uh, UKR and journey. Exactly. And then that's, that's the same reason why we've got the Brave in Britain Facebook group and why we make this series. It's to be able to share experiences such as yours with the next level of aspirant so they have all the information they need and, you know, don't trip up on the same things that, that you know, you guys and people before you have done so. Yeah. That's, that's what so, it's about. Thank uh, you for your effort in asking me. Really, today I... Again, I reminisce my experience with this kind of journey I have now. But sometimes I'm thinking, I just laugh because yeah. it's somewhat it's somewhat not easy, but I did make it and it's still I'm on the journey yet, yet to finish. But hopefully I'm, I will be a Ukrainian, hopefully. You will, and, and that's it. It's it's that whole that whole biggest advice you can give, really, which is don't give up on your dreams. Yes, thank and you for that. Follow your heart. Yeah, I have seen you in many um, groups for nurses, aspiring UKRNs. You are sharing your ideas and your experiences, and I don't know what gives you this initiative to uh, give us this kind of, uh, I mean, your effort, your initiative, and all of these things. I thought you're a nurse at first. So if you're not a nurse, then what gives you this kind of encouragement to give us some of your experience and sharings? I just want to help. That's all it is. I just do this because I want to help people. I know how difficult it is. I've seen how stressful it is. And it, you know, it, it's a huge step going from a different side of the world, different culture, different work procedures. Just everything is different and scary. So just want to help people be, well, be more prepared, essentially. Oh, that's, that would be great. I, I really, it's my first time, uh, I mean, it's not my first time, but it's my first time somebody approached me and asked for my experience and asked for to give share about uh, my experience to the world and something like some sort of like that. So I'm really happy and appreciate your work and your effort. It's really a good idea and somebody have this initiative from you. Thank you. And you are, a, to my surprise, you're, a, you're not a nurse. So it's really... Very rare. <laughs> yeah. And thank you for that. You're a great man. Double no thumbs up for you. Thank, thank <laughs> you, Kim. You know, I, you know, I do wish you the best of luck. And I know that you, you won't give up and you will be here. And, you know, who knows? Maybe we'll have a big, a big dandy gathering at some point after COVID. Yeah, hopefully. Hopefully to meet you when I will be, I will be there. OK? Exactly. That would be great. Okay. But that's it. And of course, you know, if any nurse aspirants do have any further questions or want to hear more about your story, you're welcome to join the Brave in Britain group, which will be here somewhere. You go in there, mm -hmm. you can always tag me, you can tag Kim, you can put comments, it, even if you have ideas for more topics or you want to share your experience. Go for it. We love to talk to you people. Yeah. yeah. So thank you for giving me this opportunity as well very much for giving me time as well to share my experience <laughs> pleasure is all mine and you know hopefully you know as your uh, journey progresses we can bring you back in you can share with how you're getting on in the uk how you're settling yes. what you're struggling with and, you know we can do more or bring your friends in we'll we'll have a big group chat why not no problem i will be 
glad to be part of your journey as well and sharing your ideas. Oh, I'd, be, I'd, love to hear, I'd love to hear your, your insights when you get here, just how grey yeah. and happy the country is. <laughs> but hmm? You know what, I just, I'm not so, so uh, fan of the cold weather, but hopefully. <laughs> oh good, we're well, coming to the best place. <laughs> <laughs> really, but hopefully, because Saudi Arabia is so humid this time. My God, it's 45 degrees outside, you know? <laughs> oh, you won't have that problem here. Definitely not 45 degrees today. Hopefully. I am looking forward to be in the UK. Thank yeah, we're looking much. forward to having you. You take care, Kim, and enjoy the rest of your day. Yeah, same to you. Have a nice day. Bye. No Thank you. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye. I'm sorry. Can I just, because I just came out from outside. <laughs> That's all right. Don't worry. <laughs> I'm sorry about this. I'm sorry. Oh, that's all right. Yeah, it's very hot here in Saudi Arabia. I'm sorry about this. <laughs> that's it's right. so I'll put... hot. I didn't have to be my, my... Okay. That's don't worry. I'll, then... put, I'll put this at the end in the bloopers bit. <laughs> yeah, you can cut that part, okay? <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll put it right at the end. <laughs> Is it long enough? I'm sorry about no, that. No, 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 no. I was saying thank you for saying English test first. Yes. <laughs>